Welcome to First Post and thanks to all of you who entered our flight competition. We'll tell you who the two lucky winners are in next week's show. This week we meet Julian Cope, later the tear gas explodes, and take a nice target trip down Liverpool. But first let's visit that famous riverbank where Mole and his friends live out their lives in a forgotten world of vanished manners and tolerate the madcap adventures of Toad. Wind in the Willows is stupid babyish. It shouldn't be put on television. It ruins TV. Oh, not quite what I expected straight off. That was Britain Andrew Laholt of Southbourne. But by far the majority of your letters were like this one from Stephen Holmes in Birmingham. Wind of the Willows is fab, real great. Anyone who disagrees doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, that's one way of getting rid of the opposition, Stephen. But why do you like it? Sarah Burr of Liverpool. It's educational. Better than reading a book, I'd say. Hope to see a lot more of it. Sarah Butler, who lives near Salisbury, thinks it's fantastic because it's unusual for animals to be modelled and filmed as a person. They are taught from Birmingham goes further. I think this is even a bit of a drama rama. This is ace. Well, let's hear what you think straight from the horse's mouth. Oh. Today we're at Newmarket, a medieval market town famous for its horses, and traditionally the most important racing centre in the country. Buyers come from all over the world for the December horse sales, which are considered to be the largest in Europe. This is Liberated Girl, appropriately named, and this is the Phoenix Lodge Racing Stables, owned by Ron Boss. I mean, it's a bit too big for you, isn't it? Have you got a favourite character in the Wind in the Willows? Yes, my favourite character is Marley, because he's always trying to do things and help, and help other people like Ratty and Badger. Has anybody read the book? I've read Toad's Motor Journey. Well, how does the series on Children's ITV compare with the stories that you read in the book? Uh, it's, it's better, because you're, you're, oh. in the book you can't really imagine it as well as you, the film. I thought it was good. I thought the film was better though, because in the film you could visualise what the characters looked like, and in the book you couldn't. What about the animation? Is it lifelike? Yes, it is. Yeah. Not like any other ordinary cartoon. Because the actual um, puppets yeah. stand out in the yeah. actual background. The scenery was really good. When, whereas you saw the trees and the water, they really moved. And the characters were really lifelike, the way they blinked and everything. What about the um, the voices? I thought they were lifelike as well. Yeah, I like Molly's because it was quiet and subtle. Yeah, they yeah. Use, use, most of them suit the characters. The voices suit them. That's right, they make the characters very different, don't they? Yeah, and Badger's evolved in that, and his voice goes right with the character that he plays, because he's old, and he, he knows everything. Really, his voice is really stern, like his character. Yes, I bet, do you think if you shut your eyes and just listen to it, you'd be able to tell which character was speaking? Yeah. You can yes. recognise them. I can, yeah. Mm. I can. So that shows that that's successful, doesn't yeah. it? Well, we've had lots of letters talking about who your favourite characters are, but how about this one from John and Andrew Coyle of South End? We hate the weasels. We think they ought to take them out of the series. My favourite character was, because, um, was the weasels because they were evil and they remind me of teachers. Well, I hope your teacher's not listening. I just say that. I don't know why I thought they were like teachers. It's just probably because they're mean and never tell you anything. Is that what your teachers and are like? hide things. Yes. Sometimes they're like that and sometimes they're not. Although most of you really like the programme, there were a few comments like... It's utterly boring. So boring. So one thing from County Durham asks... What? Oh, they're not so young kids. Yes, the biggest criticism is that it's for younger children, it's childish, babyish. They're all wrong. My granny watched it and she loved it. <laughs> well, just for your granny, Melanie, here's a clip from tomorrow's program. That's right, Toad. Put it down there to hide the garden roller. But I, I use the garden roller every day. R R Rabbit's roots of Beatle memorabilia, including, ooh, John Lennon's upright piano, Ringo Starr's old Mini Cooper S, absolutely masses of stuff. Let's go and have a look. Wouldn't mind the pain Would always
always feel the same. To this boy, get to Nicholas Saxton for your long and interesting letter. He says he thinks First Post should look at two programmes each week. Well, Nicholas, next week we'll do just that when we turn our critical gaze on CBTV and on number 73. So write and tell me what you think of either of those programmes. Arvin Stardust will be joining me next week in the studio, so I'm looking forward to that. But I'll be with you, of course, after Tommy Boyd will be coming up next. Here's the address. First Post, Granada TV, Manchester, M69 EA. First Post, Granada TV, Manchester, M69 EA.